Have you ever noticed how some businesses seem to explode overnight, suddenly making millions of dollars out of nowhere? Well, what if I told you that in pretty much every single case, this sudden explosion in growth wasn't luck, but was actually the result of a proven and profitable marketing strategy that virtually guaranteed their success from the start. A strategy so simple, but so effective that I've been using it for years to make millions. And I've built a system that works every single time, except for that one time. But we don't talk about that. So today, I'm gonna to show you what this strategy is, the tricks professional marketers use to make it work, and I'll give you a three-step process so you can do it yourself and grow your business and your sales faster than ever before. But first, I need to show you the brain science that makes this strategy so powerful and why other marketing tactics often fall short when it comes to growing your business and driving sales. The reason this strategy is so incredibly effective lies in a concept backed by research from a study that Google conducted known as the 7-11-4 rule. So here's what they discovered. Google, with access to billions of data points on consumer behavior, found that before a customer makes a purchase, they typically need about seven hours of engagement or interaction across 11 touch points in four separate locations. And science backs this up because by showing up in front of your customers more often and in more places, you're tapping into some pretty powerful psychological forces that make it almost impossible for customers to not want to buy from you. Things like the mere exposure effect, which explains how the more often you see something, the more you like it. So by showing up regularly in front of your audience, you make them more comfortable with you, which leads them to trust you more, which then leads them to want to make more purchases, which of course leads to more sales. Not to mention commitment and consistency bias, which shows how when people start Start engaging with your brand or your business in any way, shape, or form, well, they're far more likely to continue doing so, which means that customers move from initial interest to making a purchase quickly, easily, and with basically no persuasion required. This strategy that businesses use when they want to blow up fast is called omnipresence, a big fancy pants sounding word that makes it sound way more complicated than it actually is, as it really just comes down to showing up in the right place at the right time, which, let me tell you, is so much better than showing up at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, I might be in the wrong place. Now, unfortunately, when most people hear about omnipresent marketing, they think that the key to success is for them to be everywhere all the time, doing all the things. And so they just rush out there and start posting all kinds of random content in all kinds of random places. A Facebook post here, uh, an Instagram story there, or something on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and whatever other network comes to mind. But that approach is exhausting, ineffective, and is the perfect definition of what I affectionately refer to as random acts of marketing, a spray and pray approach that's not much better than gambling. The good news though, is that you really only need to find the one, two, maybe three places where your ideal customers are present and active online, then focus there and ignore everything else. Omnipresence isn't about being everywhere. It's about being everywhere your customers are. And that's a very big and very important difference. So now that we've got that covered, let me walk you through a more strategic, more effective, and far more profitable approach than trying to do all the things by focusing on creating less but more focused content and making sure that each message builds on the previous one so that your customer ends up at the end with the clear and very logical conclusion that you, my friend, are the best person to buy from. And now is the best time to buy. So now that you know how powerful this strategy is, let's move on to the three-step system to grow your business. And we'll kick things off starting with step one, market. We start with your market first, because if you're not crystal clear on who your target market is and who you're talking to and trying to attract, then you might as well be shouting into the void and hoping, wishing, maybe praying a little bit that somebody out there will listen. Bit of a spoiler here, but they probably won't. And even if they do listen, well, they probably won't buy. So that's where your ideal customer avatar, or ICA, comes into play. Think of your ICA as the marketing equivalent of a GPS. Without it, driving blind and could very well be headed for a very nasty crash. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly is an ICA? Well, great question, my friend. Your ICA is a detailed, borderline creepy profile of your dream customer. It's not just a vague idea of who might be interested in your business. Rather, it's a fully fleshed out persona based on as much data and research and experience as you can get. So what exactly goes into creating an ICA for your business? Well, let's break it down now. First are demographic details. 
These are the basic things like age and gender and income and occupation, education level. It's the information that you can usually get from a quick glance at someone's Facebook profile. Not that I'm advocating for Facebook stalking, of course. Next is geographic. Like what city, state, province, or country do they live in? Are they city dwellers who thrive in the hustle and bustle? Or are they more of the small town, everyone knows everyone kind of people? Understanding where your audience is located can have a massive impact on how you market to them, the words you use, and the offers you make. And finally, we have psychographic details. Now we're getting into the juicy stuff. Because psychographic details are all about understanding what makes your market tick. What are their values? What do they care about? What keeps them up at night? And perhaps most importantly, what are their miracles and miseries? Their miracles are all of their wants, their dreams, their goals and desires, all the things they're trying to move towards. And their miseries are all of their fears and pains and problems and frustrations and things they're trying to move away from. So with that said, here are two ways to gather the intel that you need to put together a really valuable ICA. The first is customer interviews. So never be afraid to talk to your current and previous customers and ask them about their experience with your business. What did they like? What did they not like? What challenges were they facing before they found you? These insights are pure gold. The next option to get more information on your ICA is the top 20% customer audit. Here you want to take a look at the top 20% of your customer base, the people who rave about you to anyone who will listen and wouldn't dream of going to your competitors. Well, what do they all have in common? What makes them such loyal fans? You can then use this information to help build your ICA. Now, here's the deal, and a bit of a truth bomb for you that you may not want to hear. But the fact is that creating an ICA isn't just some fancy pants exercise in order to make you feel like a marketing genius. It's actually essential, because when you know exactly who you're talking to, your marketing becomes laser focused. Instead of spraying your message all over the place like a garden hose with a mind of its own, but instead of spraying water, the hose would be spraying money all over the place. Oh no, my money. Well, instead of that, you're speaking directly to the people who actually care enough to listen and ultimately buy something from you. Okay, moving on to step two, the message. All right, so you've got your ICA nailed down. You know who you're talking to. Well, now it's time to figure out what you're gonna say. And this part's important, really important. Because if your message is off, you might as well be speaking elvish because no one's gonna understand you except, I don't know, maybe elves, I guess. I got you. Long story short, your message is what makes your customers stop mid-scroll, sit up and say, hold up, that is exactly what I need. But here's the thing, and I'm sorry in advance because this is going to sound harsh, but the truth is that your customers don't actually care about you, your business, or your products or services. I care. Oh, I uh, didn't realize you were still here. Look, I know it stings a little to hear that, but accepting that and understanding that what customers really care about is how your business can help them solve their problems is truly the key to making a whole lot more money. So if you're out there trying to sell vitamins, things that are nice to have, but not essential, well, it's time to pivot and start selling painkillers, things that are must haves, but more on this in just a minute. Because first, we've got to find that sweet spot where your business meets the specific needs of your market so we can build your message around that. Think of this like the plot of a good movie. You're the hero, obviously, and your audience is your trusty sidekick who's just trying to figure out how to make it through the day without everything falling apart. Well, your message is the thing that's there to show them how you're going to save the day. So how do you create a message that resonates? Start by thinking about your business's message like a map. Where's your audience right now and where do they want to go? What's standing in their way and how can you help them get there? If you can answer these questions, you're well on your way to creating a message that hits home. But we can get more specific here, and I can give you a little more context on this in order to help make it easier to implement. Like I mentioned earlier, people are far more motivated to solve a problem, this would be the painkiller, than they are to achieve a future benefit, which would be the vitamin. So when crafting your message, you need to focus heavily on the pain points your audience is experiencing right now. What's causing them stress? frustration, or sleepless nights? And how can your business make it all go away? This is where the painkiller profile comes in, a simple but powerful four-part structure to help you craft a truly irresistible money-making message. So here's what it looks like. First, ask yourself where your customers are now. Not physically, but rather you want to try to really understand their current situation, the pain they're feeling, and the challenges that they're facing. Next, ask yourself where do they want to go? You need to know their desired outcome, the relief that they're seeking, and the goals they want to achieve. Otherwise, you risk coming up with an offer that nobody wants. After that, ask what will happen when they take action. Paint a clear picture of success and show them how their life will improve once they use your business. Also, a bit of a side note here, this is more of an advanced copywriting technique, but notice how I said, ask what will happen when they take action, and not ask what will happen if they take action. 
Using when instead of if is a technique called future pacing that implies or assumes a newer and better future for them and makes it easier for your customers to imagine actually taking action and getting the desired result. Okay, then the final question here is what will happen if they don't take action? Here you want to highlight the risks of inaction and spell out exactly what could go wrong if they continue on their current path without your solution. After all, if nothing changes, then nothing changes. Okay, so now that we've got that covered, it's time to go out there and put this money-making message directly in front of them, which is where the next step comes into play, media. So you've got your market and message nailed down. You know who you're talking to and you've got something to say that your customers are actually going to care about and listen to and hopefully buy from. Now, where do you deliver that message? And no, I'm not just talking about deciding whether to post on Facebook or Instagram, though that is part of it. You see, choosing the right media is all about understanding where your audience hangs out and how they consume content. And the method I use to do this is something called search versus discovery. First things first, you need to decide whether your audience is in search mode or discovery mode. If they're actively looking for a solution, like Googling how to stop my dog from chewing the furniture, then you want to be there with some killer SEO, a Google ad, or even a YouTube video. Search media is where your audience is actively seeking you out, and your job is to make sure that your business is easy to find. So that's search. On the flip side, if your audience is just browsing, casually scrolling through Instagram, or checking out Facebook, or watching cat videos on YouTube, well, then they're in discovery mode. Here, your job is to catch their eye and create a spark of interest. You wanna be that unexpected delight in their day, like finding a $20 bill in an old jacket pocket. Discovery media is where you're putting your message in front of people who didn't even know that they needed it until they saw it. Both search and discovery marketing work. Both are good, and in a perfect world, you'd be using a combination of both of them to make sure that all your bases were covered. But if you have to choose just one, then ask yourself this question. Am I selling a want? or am I selling a need? If you're selling a want, as in something that someone would want to have, like a cool new pair of sunglasses or an exotic vacation somewhere warm and sunny, well, then start with discovery marketing. If you're selling a need on the other hand, like say you offer a 24 hour a day emergency plumbing service, well, then search marketing is going to be your secret weapon. Once you've nailed down the right media channels, it's time to decide on the format. Different formats resonate differently with various audiences. So this is where you'll want to think strategically in order to make sure you're making the right choice for you. Video is the rock star of content. It's engaging, it's dynamic, and it's got that wow factor that makes people stop and pay attention. Whether we're talking about a YouTube video, a Facebook Live, or an Instagram Reel, video content is perfect for showing off your business's personality and really connecting with your customers. It also builds trust and authority faster and more effectively than pretty much any other kind of content out there. Audio, on the other hand, is the unsung hero of content formats. Podcasts, audiobooks, and even voice notes are perfect for your customers who like to multitask. After all, they can listen to your content while they're commuting or working out or pretending to pay attention in that meeting that should have been an email. I don't want to go to school today. Then finally we have text, the reliable friend who's always there when you need to dive deep into a topic. Not to mention that blogs and articles and social media posts still pull their weight, especially when it comes to SEO and sharing your expertise with the world. Plus, text content is easy to repurpose into other formats, like turning a blog post into a podcast episode or even a video script. That said, getting the most bang out of your marketing buck is the goal, and it should be, then video is still probably the best place to start, as let's say you create a killer video for YouTube, well, that video can easily be turned into a podcast episode, a blog post, and enough social media snippets to keep your followers entertained for weeks. And if you're looking for even more ways to grow your business and get more customers and make more sales, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out the video that I've got linked up right here. That is packed full of some of my very best marketing tips, tricks, and tactics. So feel free to tap or click that now, and I'll see you in there in just a second.